Welcome back, everyone, to the Bears Travel Plays YouTube channel. Today is Sunday, September 15th, and I'm back. Breaking down a few more plays in the MLB for Sunday. We're going to start with the match between the Boston Red Sox and the Yankees. And for the best play of the day, three consecutive days in a row, we're looking at that Mets and Phillies series, a massive series between those two teams. Four more player props with the two best player props being towards the end of the video. Hope everybody enjoys their Sunday, and let's break down some ball. All right, guys, take a look at the graphic recap from Saturday night. Good day, kind of. Two and one of the best bets. That's really what we're looking for. Uh, well, we're looking for a three and zero day, uh, but uh, we can go five over five hundred of the best bets. That's what we want. Dodgers Braves under seven point five runs. Braves ten runs in that game, so that one did not hit. Francisco Lindor was out in this game. Apparently, he hurt his back stretching a uh, double, trying to stretch a double into a triple. I uh, did not know that. I was recording whenever the injury happened. Apparently, the Mets on the money line up for nothing. Bryce Harper effect. Phillies they win five to four. Ian Happ, two singles against the Rockies. Chris Sale only allowed one run against the Dodgers, so that one did cash. 2-0 no day on the player props. 0-1 oh day on the game. Picks 2-1 and one as a whole on the best bets. Let's try for the sweep on Sunday. We're going to start with the Red Sox against the Yankees. This series has been a good watch so far. Hopefully, we get a good game in this one. I do think it's going to be a fun one to watch if you like runs being scored. We got two guys on the mound who would love to give up runs in this game and a lot of hits. So I'm going to take the over 8.5 run score. We're going to start with the numbers for Carlos Rondon who's going to be on the mound for the Yankees. He's coming in with a 4.15 ERA and a 1.21 whip. His problem all season long has been the home run ball. He's now given up 28 home runs in the season. He's been in 29 games. So he's basically giving up one home run per game. And he has given up at least one home run in three consecutive appearances over the last three games. He's had two bad starts, one good start. The one good start was against the Rangers, only giving up one run on a solo shot, striking out 11 people. The two bad starts came against the Kansas City Royals in his last game, giving up four runs and two home runs. The other bad start, surprisingly enough, against my Nationals, giving up eight hits, five runs, and another home run in that game. Boston, they've been hit or miss over the last couple months with the bats, but they do have a good matchup here to put up some runs. And on the other side, we've got one of my favorite guys to talk about, Cutter Crawford, coming into this game with a 4.09 ERA. He's now given up two-plus runs in 11 consecutive appearances. Those types of numbers are only meant for people like Miles McColes and Patrick Corbin, but Cutter Crawford... He's putting himself into that legendary category over the last several appearances. He did have a good game against the Mets two starts ago, but he still gave up two runs, only giving up one hit. So when things are going wrong, things are just going bad for you. That's kind of how it happens. That's the trend that happens there. In his last game against the Orioles, he continued to struggle, giving up seven hits, three runs, two home runs. And just like Carlos uh, Rendon, he struggles with the home run ball, giving up 31 in 30 games. Both of these teams like to hit home runs. Both these teams are very capable of hitting home runs. So I like the over here. It's going to be a weird high-scoring game. Give me the over. 8.5 runs as the play. With a player prop on the screen, I'm going to take Aaron Judge. Over 1.5 bases, getting that matchup against Cutter Crawford. Aaron Judge has broke the streak. He's broke the curse of the Paw Patrol as we took him to hit a home run a couple games ago. That one did cash. This is going to be a right-handed match for Aaron Judge. He's one of the best hitters in baseball going up against right-handed pitching. He's up there with Bobby Witt and Otani. And he does have an over 320 batting average on the right side. He has 65-plus extra base hits on the season going up against right-handed pitching. And with the way Cutter Crawford has been dealing over the last several games, giving up six plus hits in two of those three. Taking Aaron Judge here feels like it's kind of stealing. So I'm going to take the over 1.5 bases as the play for the best play of the day. Third time's a charm here. We're looking at the Mets going up against the Phillies. I'd say the Mets kind of got screwed yesterday. If it wasn't for a couple Bryce Harper bombs, the Mets kind of had that game wrapped up, even without Francisco Lindor in that lineup. That was a really bad loss for the Mets. I feel like it's going to affect them in this game. And that's why I'm going to take the Phillies here on the money line as the play. We also potentially... Have Francisco Lindor missing another game, and that's going to be a big impact because this guy, he's the heart and soul of this team right now. Yesterday I recorded when the game was going on. Didn't know that he had the uh, injury. Didn't know he was going to be out on Saturday afternoon. I guess it happened whenever he was running, uh, rounding second, trying to stretch to a triple. The guy I was talking to in the comment section said that it looks like the back injury happened on that play. So I don't know if he's going to be back in this game. No pun intended. I'm going to take the Phillies here uh, on the money line going up against the Mets here. David Peterson's going to be on the mound for the Mets. He's been good on the season, but he's coming off a five-run, eight-hit game against the Blue Jays. On the season, 2.91 ERA, 1.35 whip. I just think the confidence is a little bit shaken. He was kind of wheeling and dealing over the last six games, and then all of a sudden, a big speed bump against the Blue Jays. He's also been trending that way a little bit. It was bound to happen. He's been giving up a lot of hits, not a lot of runs. He's given up five-plus hits in five consecutive games now. The runs just happen to fall in this game. I just think the Phillies will be able to get to him, and the Phillies also have a really good arm on the mound. Christopher Sanchez... And this rotation for the Phillies, they're loaded. He's behind Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler. He's coming up with a 3.33 ERA and a 1.24 whip. And I guess he's also behind Ranger Suarez. So this Phillies rotation is incredible if they can find a way to get a deep run of the postseason. It's really not about the pitching match of the day. It's about how the Mets lost yesterday. I just don't think they can bounce back from a game like that. So I'm going to take the Phillies here 
on the money line as the play with the player props on the screen. I'm going to take Trey Turner of the Phillies to go over 1.5 bases. Trey Turner, he's a fantastic talent for the Phillies. I feel like he's not really talked about a lot as one of the best players in baseball, but he's up there with one of the best players in baseball. He can hit the ball with the best of them. He's got an incredible speed. He's really good with the glove. And uh, I like him in this game going up against David Peterson, who's given up five plus hits in five consecutive games. Trey Turner has yet to get himself a hit on the board in this series. That's probably going to change today. Turner on the season, 321 batting average going up against left-handed pitching, nearly a 550 slug percentage as well. He's going to find one he likes in this game and go for an extra base hit. Over 1.5 bases as the play there. For the best play of the day, for the player props, we're going to look at the batting prop first. Give me a Marcel Zuna, over 1.5 bases between the Braves and the Dodgers. Turns out the Braves can hit the ball except whenever I need them to score over 4.5 runs going up against my favorite team in baseball, going up against a guy who's given up three plus runs in 11 consecutive games in Jake Irvin. That's how it works most of the time over here. It's just the luck of the draw. Braves, all of a sudden, they can hit the ball again in this spot. We should see the Braves score a lot of runs. Walker Buehler is going to be back on the mound. He's given up two plus runs in every game that he's been in since coming back from that injury. He's also given up five plus hits in four consecutive games, coming in with a 5.95 ERA and a 1.64 whip. He has not been good on the season. He has not been good ever since coming back from that injury. Marcelo Zuna is going to get the two top pitches for Walker Buehler that he throws 50% of the time in this game. He's hitting both of them 350 plus this season. We have the fastball. He's hitting 353, the cutter 370, and he's got a slug percentage above 550 on both of those pitches. He has a 300 batting average going up against Randa pitching with 51 extra base hits. This should be a cakewalk for him over 1.5 bases as Walker Buehler continues to struggle for the best pitching prop of the night. He's got a great mustache, but unfortunately for him, the mustache cannot help him on the mound. We're going to take Miles McCullis of the St. Louis Cardinals to go over 2.5 runs against the Blue Jays. This has been a very special run for Miles McCullis because he's now officially topped our guy Patrick Corbin as one of the worst starting pitchers in baseball. Patrick Corbin held that title for a long time, but I think he can confidently pass the torch on to Miles here because he's now given up three plus runs in eight of the last 10 games, and he's coming off one of the worst performances of any starting pitcher in baseball against the Mariners this year. Against the Seattle Mariners team, who is dead last this season going up against right-handed pitching, he gave up nine hits, seven runs, six of them being earned, only one home run. That brought his ERA up to 5.55 with a 1.31 whip, and he's now given up six plus hits in nine of the last 10 games. The Blue Jays, they are nothing special, but they are playing better baseball over the last couple of months with a 246 batting average. Going up against right-handed pitching, the Blue Jays are top 15 this season in baseball going up against right-handers. And I will say, this team, they're pretty good at hitting that fastball. They're also pretty good with the off-speed stuff, including the slider and the changeup. And if you take a look at the numbers uh, for Miles McCoy at the bottom left-hand corner there, you would see on the screen his three pitches that he throws the most, fastball, slider, and sinker. Teams are hitting all those pitches above 250 on the season. So his best stuff that he offers is getting absolutely rocked every single game. So I don't see any way the Blue Jays don't put up a couple runs on him. Give me Miles McCoy's. Over 2.5 runs as the play there. Let's go over to the recap graphic. We're going to be taking the over 8.5 runs between the Yankees and Boston. Trey Turner over 1.5 bases against the Mets. Aaron Judge over 1.5 bases in that matchup against Cutter Crawford. Phillies on the money line. I don't think the Mets can bounce back after that bad loss yesterday. Marcelo Zuna over 1.5 bases against the Dodgers. And then Miles McCullis over 2.5 runs going up against the Blue Jays. Guys, it's going to do it for the MLB Picks and Props for Sunday, September 15th, slated games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching.